three and a half thousand volts, and then a much bigger coil stepping that up to a pressure of 400,000 volts, which is enough pressure to push the electricity across the country through the national grid. From the very earliest days of electricity, scientists realized that if you put electric power through a wire, you can get it to glow. If you put too much through, it actually burns through. But before it burns through, it glows very brightly. Watch this. And there it goes. And that was the inspiration. Perhaps they could produce light by passing electricity through a wire. The reason it burns through is because there's oxygen around it. So you've got to separate your wire from your oxygen. So you put your wire in a glass envelope. That's what they did. And this is a replica of Joseph Swan's very first electric light bulb. He also introduced carbon filaments. This was his very first commercial bulb. And these are some of the early ones as well. And this one, dating back to 1890, still lights up. And in these early beginnings, we have all the variety of electric lights that we see around us all the time, wherever we go these days. But there's another way of producing light in a glass envelope. And that's by heating not a wire, but gas. These are executive toys from over 100 years ago. They're called Geissler tubes. And the electricity causes the gas inside the tubes to glow. Here's another one. The green light is caused by salts in the glass. And they're gorgeous. Of course, they were the inspiration for neon lights, which we see all over the place these days. At about the same time, a man called Crooks produced this, the very first cathode ray tube. And this produced a ray that went down to the end of the tube and made the other end fluoresce. But notice something else. Inside, there's a metal cross casting a shadow at the other end because the ray only travels in straight lines. But they found that by using a magnet, they could actually bend the ray around the metal cross. By using magnets, you could control the ray. And controlling this electricity led to the development of valves and the whole concept of radio. This is a very modern valve, look at that. However, by deflecting this ray, the end of a tube, of course, you could produce television. So television came from this early cathode ray tube. But more important than that, when they discovered that it could deflect the ray with a magnet, it made them think the ray must be made of something. The electronic beam must be made of particles, smaller than the smallest particle known, which was the atom. And this led to a completely new field of science, a field of atomic physics. Professor, let me explain. I'm going to tell you exactly what electricity is. It is little particles. This is a model of one atom of copper with a nucleus, which is very complicated, forget it, <laughs> surrounded by lots of little things whizzing around like satellites. They're called electrons, and they are your electricity. Copper wires using electricity all the time to carry electricity because these little electrons can easily fly off in all directions, you see? And it is the electrons moving from atom to atom that are your electricity. Now, where have the electrons gone? Don't worry, they go to other atoms. Meanwhile, other electrons come to this atom. Here they come. Only usually it's not as many as that. And it's this movement of electrons that is your electricity. Simple, no? Oh, yes, of course it is. Now, this is a model of an atom of silicon. Very different. A nucleus, yes, complicated, forget it. Round here, once more, electrons whizzing round. But they don't spin off. Notice? No. But you can get them to move if you push them. And you need electricity to push them. But it's because you can control the electrons in silicon that you can produce silicon chips and the transistor. Now, this is a silicon transistor. Very simple, a sandwich. Silicon here, silicon there, in the middle, silicon. What silly fool thought of that? Well, you see, the silicon is slightly different. Full of electrons waiting to whiz about, yes. But also a few extra ones here and at the other end. Whereas, in the middle, there's just a few missing. And we represent those with these holes, you see. Now, by applying an electric current here, only very, very small, you will attract to the holes the extra electrons. But when you do that, watch what happens. All 
the electrons go from this end to that end, because the holes are soon filled up with any old electron. And in doing this, you created a switch, moving a parcel of electrons from there to there. And it all happens in a twinkling of an eye. Thank you, Professor. Now, this is a photograph of a silicon chip, and it contains 45,000 transistors, 90,000 junctions. And it works because little parcels of electrons are moved from here to there, all over the place. But of course, this is a blow-up. The actual chip is this size. Just a quarter of a square centimetre. But it's thanks to silicon chips like this and so many other advances in electronics that today we're living in an electronic wonderland. Some of the latest electrical developments have occurred in the field of lasers. There's almost a new use for lasers every day. It's occurred to someone that a laser beam, when it passes through a prism, comes out at a different angle. I've got a mirror to reflect it. Now, if you lower the power of the laser, it'll come through the prism at yet a different angle. And by switching the power of the laser quickly, you can change the angle quickly and produce an optical switch. Now, if you could make a computer that works using laser optical switches, you could produce a computer that might work at a thousand times the speed that the fastest computers work at today. The mind boggles. Mind you, the mind wouldn't boggle but for electricity because your brain only works because there are electrical impulses connecting one cell to another, just like a computer. But for most people, electricity is the stuff that runs the appliances around the home. They're only interested in things around the home. But even there, there are new innovations all the time. Look at this plug. It's a safety plug. If there's anything wrong with this plug here, or with the lead, or with the appliance, then the socket switches off the electricity, making it totally safe. And you must always make sure that all electrical appliances are totally safe. And be very, very careful when you're dabbling with electrical equipment. Because although electricity is man's greatest servant, there's no question that out of control, it can be his worst enemy. <laughs> See what I mean? Goodbye.